Welcome friends at GNK. It's good to be back with you again. We made it through a long spring and now we're into the heat of the summer. And with that brings the opportunity to assess our crops and maybe make decisions on what we're gonna do in crop. So today we wanna to talk about foliar feeding your crop. Is it worth it or is it not worth it? We get a lot of questions every year and we also get hammered with foliar feeds and use this product and use that product. So I wanna talk a little bit about what works and what doesn't work and what our experiences taught us. One thing that we generally don't see is a lot of response to macronutrients, particularly phosphorus, potassiums, nitrogens, even calciums. That's our job is to amend your soil and let your crop feed from the roots. Most of those nutrients move to the plant through a process called mass diffusion. And so they pull that from the soil itself. And that's really where you wanna pull that nutrition. And those are things that I don't really like seeing foliar fed. In extreme cases where we have some severe deficiencies for whatever reason, maybe it's a new farm or maybe it's a sandy farm, for example, we have seen some potassium responses, but that's very rare. That's only on low fertility scenarios. If I was going to use a potassium, I would stick to a potassium acetate and avoid potassium nitrates and potassium sulfates. They generally don't respond. But there again, that comes down to a low poor fertility situation. So generally speaking, don't think of foliar feed as a way to fertilize your crop. They're traditionally supplements to take the crop to the next level. Now, let's talk about some foliar feeds that do in fact work and are in fact worth your money. So let's move to a bean field now. Okay. Boy, you can really see the tile this year. You know, tile will pay virtually every single year, even in a drought year. You know why that is? Because of oxygen in the soil. So you can see tile in a drought almost as much as you can see it in a wet year, just like this one. But over the tile, you'll get rid of water. And when water leaves, guess what it pulls behind it? Oxygen. So you have better microbial activity, better porosity, and better oxygen. And that's why soybeans will nodulate over the tile much faster and much better. And corn roots will drive deeper it's just a better environment, but it's all about oxygen. Just like managing your calcium is driving your oxygen. Drainage will pay in spades this year. But honestly, I don't know what year it doesn't really pay in. You're either gonna pay to have it or you pay not to have it. Those are nice beans. These are nice beans. So we're gonna to touch on what foliars do in fact work. The ones that we do like are minor elements particularly manganese, zincs, borons, sulfur-based, by the way, especially in soybeans, like the field we're standing in now. What we do see good responses to are those particular minor elements at certain stages of the crop. And one of the most consistent responses you can get on soybeans is manganese sprayed early with your post-herbicide application you can see some pretty consistent results in that regard. So think about that. Secondly, when we move to the R2, R3 stages, which is fungicide timing, we can get a pretty good response on manganese again, coupled with a zinc and a boron, sulfur-based materials. So keep those in mind when it comes to fungicide timing in soybeans. We also see some pretty good responses on manganese and boron and zinc reproductive stages in corn as well. So those are our biggest opportunities in terms of foliar feed. Now, let me add, you will generally see the best response to foliaring minor elements on your best crop. So what a foliar feed micro won't do is take a 40 bushel bean crop and turn it into a 70 bushel bean crop. They don't do that. Likewise with corn. So the best response we see on micronutrient applications are a good potential bean crop and a good potential corn crop. So keep those in mind as you're making decisions here in the last half of the summer. One final note, 
It's super important to understand nutrient loads. I cannot stress that enough. So make sure you understand what kind of product you're using at what kind of rate and what kind of load it becomes. So get with one of our staff. We will help steer you through that when it comes to those decisions. What you don't want to do is use a product just because it has manganese, zinc, and boron in it. There are dozens out there on the marketplace. However, suggested rates on a lot of those aren't enough. So it's kind of like this. If I have a headache and I need to take Advil because I have a headache, do I take one Advil or do I take two or three? Well, I'll never take one because one's not going to kick my headache. I'll take two or three because I know it will kick my headache. So don't use low rates just because it's in there. So I might have taken one Advil, I still got ibuprofen, but it didn't knock my headache. You might use one quart of any said product, but you're getting such a minor load of micronutrients, you're not doing anything for the crop. It's super important to have the right load, and it's super important to focus on those three key miners, manganese, zinc, boron, sulfur-based. If you stick to the right plan, you can get a nice response, even in this tight economic time. So hopefully this is another concept that we have brought to you that you can utilize on your farm. As always, reach out to any of us with questions and please tune into our next video. And until then, we'll see you later. Okay, here we go. Now, what did you say next? Good corn though. That's nice corn. I don't know. Those are really nice beans. Oh, that corn is spectacular. Those are nice beans. Look at this corn. That corn is spectacular. These are nice beans. When you see one nice field of corn, you know what? What you want to see is, what you can't see enough of is another nice field of corn. I mean, all that sounds good at least, right? Man, that is nice corn too.